What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And today is free comic book day. Which means all of you need to get out to your local comic book store and go pick up as many free copies as you can. Highly recommend that you also support and buy some of them as well. For those of you that cannot get out of your house, or for whatever reason you don't have a local comic book shop, we are going to be covering Dark Crisis issue number zero. A story by Joshua Williamson taking place after the events of Death of the Justice League, which we saw in Justice League issue number 75. If you guys need to get caught up on everything that has been going on since Infinite Frontier issue number zero, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It'll get you completely caught up on everything that has been going on with DC Comics. I also wanted to let you guys know that we are going to be releasing the five names of the winners for our giveaway. For those of you that watched the Doctor Strange video that saw the post, you saw that we were doing a giveaway for five winners to get a free comic book. So make sure that you guys are tuning in tomorrow to find out if you won the comic. Usually I say buy the comic, but in this case, it is absolutely free. If you have access to the internet, you can go to Amazon and download this for $0. So with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so with the death of the Justice League just happening, we have some children in the Hall of Justice. They are getting a tour of everything the Justice League has ever done. From battling Darkseid to battling Starro, the Justice League has won time and time again. As they continue this tour, what we see is of course them not being the first Justice League. There have been so many teams to come before them. Everyone having their favorite version, their favorite roster. But it's not just the roster who makes them who they are. It is what they all represent. Because the superheroes, they represent what is best about humanity. They are a reflection of humanity itself. But at times, they even fail. Because they are far from perfect individuals. And the most recent version of the Justice League, they sacrificed themselves so everyone else didn't have to face the darkness. Leaving this world, a world without the Justice League. As this tour continues on its way, what we see is that this tour guide is in fact Clayface. We don't know who he is working for, but what we do know is that they have planned a heist. The Justice League now being gone, everything in this mausoleum, it is up for grabs. That includes the mother box that is resting here. With the Justice League being out of the picture, people like Clayface and his associates, they are deciding that it is time for them to get their due, believing that nothing stands in their way. As Clayface goes to grab the mother box, we have the arrival of The Flash. Wally West showing up on scene. Clayface is letting him know that he tried to go the straight and narrow. But now that the Justice League is gone, it is open freaking season. And all across the globe, criminals and villains alike, they are making big moves. They are making big plays. As the two of them begin to tussle, we see Wally West completely encased in clay. Unable to move, unable to escape, Clayface turns around to grab hold of that mother box, only to find that the children, they have taken it and they have ran. With Clayface chasing after them, Wally West is able to use his lightning and break free of all of this clay. With Clayface taunting him saying, isn't this the time that your new Justice League shows up where my new teammates show up and we have a big fight? Wally West lets it be known that there is no new Justice League, but he is more than willing to teach Clayface a lesson. Running circles around Clayface as quickly as he possibly can. The thing about the Flash is he admits a tremendous amount of heat and making this cyclone circling around Clayface 
All of that heat is baking clay face, just like you would put clay into the oven, as if you were making a sculpture. And when that heat is applied to that clay, it turns rock solid. With Clayface being defeated, frozen like a statue, the Flash gives these children the rest of the tour. And as he gives this tour, one of the kids, they ask a question. Do you think we will ever see the Justice League again? And he brings up the past. He brings up the crisis where Barry Allen had been lost when Wally West had to fill the shoes of the Flash. And for him, this was something that was relatively difficult. We all know the story of how he struggled not wanting to surpass his mentor, Barry Allen. But over time, he has began to realize that the Justice League is something that is always growing. It is always changing. And you have to embrace the new. So it's not really a question of when we will have a new Justice League or if we will have a new Justice League. It is a question of who the new Justice League is going to be made up of because now that there are very big shoes to be filled we are gonna have a lot of people wanting to step up and fill those shoes now there are two other little parts to this story that we will be covering but this part of the story has come to an end and it will continue in justice league dark crisis number one and dark crisis number one lucky for us we get a sneak peek at dark crisis issue one and this is the sigil the justice league have perished and the world they are all in mourning with Nightwing being the one to give a speech to the entirety of the world what we are seeing them do with Nightwing is really make him the next Batman he is the one that's going to be filling the role of leader of the new Justice League and to be fair if anybody has earned that role it is definitely Dick Grayson through all of his trials and tribulations his mentorship done by Batman him being on his own, dealing with Bloodhaven, dealing with the world in his own fashion, becoming his own man and his own hero. Time and time and time again, Nightwing is proving to be one of the best leaders the world has ever seen. With the sigil coming to an end, we pick up the next day and we find the world is in chaos. Every two-bit thug, every single villain out there. The Justice League is gone, and now they think they have free reign. All of these doomsday cults, they come rising up. Luckily, this world is not left alone. From Superboy to The Flash to our Green Lanterns. These doomsday cults may be out of control, acting like the end is very much near. Our heroes are doing everything they can just to get control and some kind of order. And so that is our quick little sneak peek into what comes next. And so for our last story, we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane. This is going to be the history of DC's multiverse. A relatively quick and compact explanation trying to help people that understand where we are now in comparison to, say, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Starting us at the very beginning of time. In the beginning, there was nothing. It was nothing but blackness. But one day, one day there was a light. And from that speckle of light exploded the multiverse. This is the very beginning of the push and pull between the light and darkness. That push and pull, it eventually led to the event known as Crisis on Infinite Earths. The Monitor giving his life to activate the multiverse's immune system. This of course is our superheroes. Being brought to life, being given power. This is the way that they fought back. This is the way that they defeated the Anti-Monitor. But even in his defeat, it came at a very heavy cost. The multiverse had died, and it gave birth to just one single universe. And with the Great Darkness being pushed back, it still lied there in its slumber, beginning to create avatars, with Swamp Thing making a truce between the light and the dark. There seemed to be no reason for conflict to ever exist again, that the harmony would continue on. But even in hibernation, the great darkness, it used the forces of evil and darkness to his advantage, being avatars of his very will. This is all in an effort to snuff out the light. The attacks from these avatars 
it caused another event. It caused the birth of another multiverse, with Darkseid triggering the final crisis. The truce has been broken, the Great Darkness realizing that the immune system, the superheroes, they are the true threat. The only thing stopping the Great Darkness from taking absolute control. Knowing that if you target Earth Zero, the Earth that is at the center of the entirety of the multiverse, that every variant off of this Earth is just a sub-variant of Earth Zero. And so in the shadows, the Great Darkness has been plotting, moving his forces into play from the Metal Wars all the way to Future States. And the ultimate avatar, the one known as Pariah. The stage is now set for our Dark Crisis. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, being free comic book day, you gotta absolutely love them giving us this little, little sneak peek in what is yet to come. I know there's not a lot of fans of this new Justice League. To be fair, many of us haven't given it the chance. That seems to be the overall problem. I'm willing to give Joshua Williamson the opportunity to tell this story. Because for so long we have said don't change the characters. Give us someone new, give us someone original, and make a story off of that. And while Jonathan isn't necessarily a new character, we have individuals like Yara Floor. I'm sure we're going to see Joe and, and probably many of the other Green Lanterns as they make their way back to Earth with them now having their power of the Green Lantern ring again. I think my favorite part of all of this is the opportunity for Nightwing to truly, truly ascend to the throne, if you will. To fill his father's shoes and become a better leader, a, a more understanding, charismatic leader than Batman could have ever been. With all of these people making plays, what it appears to be happening is just, just low level guys are making the plays. But the big guys, the big villains, they're not really doing anything very serious. In fact, it looks like they are laying low. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next. I am very curious on what Lex Luthor is doing and what his plans are. Because this is everything he could have ever dreamed of. The Justice League taken out in one fell swoop. Believing that he can manipulate Jonathan. Believing that he is superior to everybody else that is still left on this planet. I think we are going to be seeing Lex Luthor take his next steps. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.